In this video, we've already got the motor in the truck and sat down in there. Uh, everything's mounted up and we are ready to start with the um, cable shift process or the rod shift process, the cable clutch process, and the wiring harness and the rest of it. Uh, a couple notes to make that uh, found out during uh, putting the motor in, um, it is easier if you take the, pat or the driver's side mount off um, I know that I had it on it in a previous video, uh, but we found that it was a little bit easier to go ahead and to take that passenger side or driver's side mount off, I'm sorry, the one on the transmission, to take that off, tilt it up into place, and then bolt it back on. Um, the bolts are a little bit shorter, a little bit different than on a standard O2O, uh, so it makes it a little bit easier to get the mount back on uh, once the motor is already in the truck. So let's go ahead and let's focus on the uh, cable clutch part and the rod shift part now. Uh, and I'm not gonna cover bolting all the motor up because it's the standard same way as a normal 1.6 diesel or gas or anything else Mark One. That's the beauty of this kit. It makes it all the same as that. So if you can pull the motor out, you can put the motor back in. Uh, it doesn't require any modifications uh, to any mounts or anything like that. So I'm gonna stop rambling. Let's hop into this part of it. So you can see here, I already have all this stuff set up and done. I did that because I've never done this before and I didn't want to fight doing it on camera and messing up and redoing it again. So I went ahead and I put it all together and then I'm gonna walk you back through the steps that I took to make all this happen. So when we got the motor set in here, I went ahead and put the mount back on and put the cable clutch holding bracket on here. Uh, like I previously stated, the kit that I had is an earlier version, so it had a little mount right there, and they've changed it out to a new bracket style, and I didn't have that one. Uh, so I just went ahead and whipped out the plasma cutter and made one real fast. Uh, but if you buy the kit, you'll have the new style that it bolts right there. So you'll put the mount on, and you'll put this bracket on, um, and then you'll you might leave it kind of loose to give you some adjustment in there. The cable has a lot of adjustment too, which is helpful. Um, so your cable setup may be adjusted out differently than mine. Uh, since I made this bracket, it's just what it is. <coughs> so I started off by putting the other end of the clutch cable into the pedal assembly. To install this end of the cable, you simply stick it through the hole that the previous clutch cable came out and you fish your arm way up under the dash and you just hook the clip around the end of the clutch pedal and that takes care of that and then we're ready to focus back on the bottom half. So with the clutch cable in installed, um, I went ahead and slid this in through. Now the billows here kind of get stuck on the opening of the bracket so you kind of have to pull the billows through and then slide the rest of the cable through. Sorry, I kicked the camera. Um, once the whole cable assembly is through, you have to pull it out as much as you can to get it over this, um, over the bracket and onto the holder. Now, it depends on how your cable is. If you can adjust all the slack out of this and slide it around, uh, with the previous version of the bracket, I was able to do that. Uh, but this bracket here, I wasn't quite able to do that, so I adjusted the cable all the way out, and then I just kind of pulled down on the um, clutch throw lever here until I was able to slide it up and around, and then I adjusted it back out some. So that was all that is. It's pretty simple. Um, you want to make sure that you get your dust boot back on, and if you move it out of the way, and then the cable part is all done. So we are ready to do the, talk about the rod shift part. If you remember from the previous video, I had to go ahead and cut the cl plastic clip that came up and around here, the black plastic that held on the other, um, it was the cable support. So I cut that off and then I bolted the two of these spears on here uh, so that the rods could connect to. Well, I, I probably shouldn't have done that then. I was jumping the gun, but didn't know it at the time. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I'm doing this. So, um, this one's okay to put on, but leave this one off because this rod, this bent rod goes to here. So, 
with the one connector on this end, the other spare one that you have goes way back on the lever that goes to the um, shifter box, that first lever that we installed while the motor was still out. And so the big long threaded rod that you have connects with the two. I put it on the outside lever. Let me show you that one. This is the other end. Hold on, let me get my finger there. This is the other end of the long rod and you can see the shift lever here and I put it on the outside one. If you move it to the inside one, it gives you a little shorter throw. Uh, but just for starting out, I tried it on that one. And that takes care of the long rod. These have some adjustment in them. You can see this lock nut is loose to where you can spin this rod forward or backward to get the right amount of adjustment that you need. This will be a little bit of a tweaking process. It's not just stick the damn levers on and go because it is a conversion. There are slight variations in wear and tear on all these vehicles, so you will have to do some adjustment on this to make it just right. The second bar that we have of the three bar system is the bent bar that comes in the kit. Now the long part of the bent bar that is probably two and a half, three inches long goes up top and the short bent part goes on the bottom. That's how you know which way that goes. There is some slight modification with this piece right here. This piece should be straight parallel this way, but to get the right angle on this, I kind of had to bend it around and straighten it up and bend it and straighten it just to get the right, the right feel to it, the right, to where this lever here was, goes like this, you know, goes up and down versus sideways like it was. So you may have to get a pair of pliers, dikes, or an adjustable wrench on here to kind of bend and tweak this, but this is really the only real modification that has to be done to the transmission to make this kit work. Just bending this piece around a bit. And that goes back to the relay lever that we added onto the back of the transmission off of our old transmission. Um, so that's that part. And the last part is the third lever, and that simply connects the other half of the relay lever to the shift, um, to the part coming out of the shift box. So let me get down there and see if I can get you a good picture of that too. All right, if you look, you can see right here, let me move the camera around. Here is the rod going back, and here is the uh, relay lever right down back here here we go and then from this there's another lever right there the short straight rod and that goes back along here and it connects back in with the um go into the shift box right here this whole assembly that we changed around and that is the three rod setup on this pretty straightforward let me go ahead and set the camera down so it'll be stable again and we'll pick this back up. So that is the whole cable clutch and rod uh, conversion kit process. It's all made to be nice and easy. I don't have the little set pins that keep these things clipped on right now while I go ahead and try to make sure this all uh, is adjusted out right. And it was pretty close on the first try. I had all the forward gears. But I couldn't quite get the reverse gears, you know, two and four, uh, the lower gears um, on the shift pattern. So I had to tweak this a little bit to make it work. Uh, and I had to adjust the length of this one just a little bit uh, to make all that work too. So just take your time. It's best if you have a buddy here that can go ahead and, and watch this and tweak it for you as you're shifting in the truck. But you can do it by yourself. That's what I've been doing. Um, so just take your time and adjust it out right and you shouldn't have any problems. If you are shifting from a four speed to a five speed, you do need the taller lever that goes down on the rod going into the transmission or into the shift box itself. But other than that, everything else is included in this kit. Let's talk about coolant hoses here for a second. Now we're gonna use our stock Mark I radiator and we use the coolant flange off of the old motor uh, because it's a little bit different than the uh, TDI one. So using the, but it mounts just the same. So using the stock 
Mark I coolant flange allowed us to use our stock lower radiator hose. We're also going to be using the stock top radiator hose, but on the upper coolant flange here, uh, there's an extra nipple that is for the return line that goes back to the tank. We're just going to cap that off with a vacuum plug or a rubber plug, uh, something on that, put a hose clamp around it, cap that off, and use the stock return line off the Mark 1 radiator. You could, if you wanted to, which will also, well, I mean, it'll get rid of that coolant temp sensor, so maybe you don't want to, but you could if you wanted to. It's not super big of a deal, uh, but in this case, we're going to go ahead and keep the stock one, uh, the, the stock TDI one, and just cap that line off. Now the heater coat, the heater core hoses, the top one that plugs into the side of the head is going to work just fine, but the metal one that comes from the oil filter uh, or the water pump assembly and on around isn't really going to work for this aspect of uh, the swap. So you have two options here. You have to, to either use like a stock 1.6 turbo diesel hose like off a of Mark 1. That one will work just fine because the routing of the hose is different due to the oil cooler. So if you have a Mark 1 turbo diesel laying around or you can find the, the, the coolant hose that metal hard line that goes around the oil filter and up to the heater core, you can use that just fine. But what we're going to do is take the two metal hoses, the one that came with the truck and the one that came on the motor, and splice them together to make it fit just fine. This is the same thing that I did with the previous AAZ swap, and it worked great. It just gives us one more little rubber bushing or connector hose, so it, it does induce another possibility of a leak, but is kind of small so we're not going to worry about it that much uh, versus going out and trying to find the right hose which are getting harder to find anymore. So here we have both of our hoses. This is the uh, TDI one right here and this is the stock one. So kind of holding them together you can see the differences we we'll move around here <coughs> in the hoses. They kind of are the same up here at the top in the middle but down here at the bottom is where they change. This one goes behind the oil filter and this one goes around the cooler and in front of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to line them up on the head where they should go stock and then kind of cut them both in approximately the same places, put them together and use a piece of hose over it to, as a coupler. So I know that kind of sounds kind of hard to understand with me just talking about it, so I'm going to show you about it uh, here in a second. With the stock TDI one back in position, you can see how it's just, it's kind of at the wrong angle. I guess you, you could maybe make that work, but you get kind of a kink in the hose here, um, but it's just a lot lower than the, one point, than the stock Mark 1 one is. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the other hose put it up into approximate position, get some stuff out of the way to where it goes, and then we're going to trim both of them to work just right. So you can see here, here are the two hoses, and they are roughly in the right position. And you can see at this point right here, they are basically kind of the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the hose here and here so that we have this going back to the coolant tank and then I will use a piece of hose to couple them together. So this is just mock-up so we can get our a pin out and we can mark it here and here and then we'll cut it and then trim it to fit perfectly. Zoom in so you can see this a little bit better. I'm going to cut it right here and right back here at the bend uh, so that I have a little extra room to, to trim it up and make it fit just fine. So I'll get those cut and we'll come back to it. So here we've cut the pipes and we have them routed the way they should be. And you can see that it fits, fits pretty nice through here. Let's zoom in on it and take a closer look. So here is the joint itself. You can see that I left plenty of room to get the coupler on here that we're going to use, just a piece of radiator hose and some hose clamps. 
You could, if you wanted to and were good, you could weld this up solid uh, just to get rid of any coupler. There's just a tiny bit of gap here that I think you could make work. Uh, if you put it up on the, the mount where it should be, um, the mount here that it sits on below the coolant flange, it, it is a little tight right here with this oil line. So you could either move that tab or you could just not have it on there at all and it'll be held into place pretty good um, with the rest of the mounts and when you put that coolant hose there or you can deal with the oil line if you wanted to. But this works pretty good. Um, we'll put it back up where it goes. You know, and you can make you can make that work too, and that saves you from having to find or to buy another part. So we'll go ahead and we'll put a piece of rubber hose that fits over it, we'll clamp it down, and we will move on to the next part. You can see here now that we have our completed hose with little coolant hose coupler ready to go. It's all tightened up. We can throw our coolant reservoir in, hook it up to that, throw a radiator in, hook all that together, and our coolant system is done. Easy peasy. All right, this time we're going to tackle the exhaust of the truck. Now, this comes from Tectonic Tuning via S&P, and it is mandrel bent and stainless steel, all nice and spiffly welded, uh, and it's designed to do just for this application. It's made to put an AHU into a Mark I. They also have them for an ALH or an AAZ or a 1.8T. I mean, anything that you want to put, you can pretty much get it now, a custom downpipe, um, already for it, making your job a whole lot easier. Now this one is $400, $450. It is an expensive piece, but it's just so nice. And it makes the job so much easier just to put it in and go. So after that, we'll go ahead and finish the exhaust the rest of the way out uh, after we get the swap up and running. It took me just a little bit of fidgeting to get the exhaust on up in here. I actually had to cut the bracket that was on the flange that supported this off to be able to get it up in there because it, it hit on the axle on here a little bit. But other than that, it fits real nicely. There is one piece right here. Let me see if I can get you a, a close up on it. Hold on, give me a second. Let me get the light because the truck is dark underneath it. Okay, so if you look right here, this piece of the bracket kind of hits the exhaust just a little bit. I mean, it's just barely touching it. So I may come back through here with a grinder and just cut that little piece off. But the rest of the exhaust looks real nice. If it's, let me turn my light around for you. It fits up against the shift box nice. And it'll carry on out through the back of the truck just fine. And while we're there, look at these floor pans. Aren't these awesome for a Mark I? I mean, there's not a whole lot of rust on them. Even the back are nice. I mean, that's just a metal piece. That doesn't count. But look at these floor pans. I'm just happy with these. So with the rest of the exhaust, we'll go ahead and finish it out at a shop. And the next video will be wiring it in the intercooler. Later.